Hello friends and welcome to JWReasoning.com. The topic that I'd like to talk about on this video is the topic, Is Jesus Your Mediator? Now I've spoken about this on another video, on another channel, another YouTube channel for uh, an XJW ministry. And I just wanted to take the time to do a video on this channel. I have written an article about it on the JW Reasoning website, but I wanted to just take the time to ask you, is Jesus your mediator? Now you may be surprised at what the Watchtower answer is to this question. Now, when I was a ministerial servant, I was uh, giving a talk and, and I had given a, a talk at the Kingdom Hall and then while the circuit overseer was in, and they wanted me to say the prayer at the close of the meeting. You know, a lot of times when they're considering a brother for an elder, that's what they'll do. And so at the close of the prayer, I said, we thank you, or we pray, rather, in the name of your Son, our King and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, when I came down off of the platform, a loving brother who I, I just really respect and admire, he very kindly came up to me and he says, Brother Martin, he says, I just wanted you to know, when you closed your prayer, you, you prayed in the name of our King and Mediator, Jesus Christ. And I said, that's right. And he says, well, Jesus is not your mediator. He's your ransomer. And that really caught me by surprise. And I said, can you explain that to me? He says, well, he says, the understanding of the organization is that Jesus is mediator for only 144,000, but he is your ransomer. Well, naturally, I wasn't going to take the brother to task. I went home. At that time, we had the uh, Watchtower CD-ROM. I popped that CD-ROM in and I started doing some research. And of course, where do I go? As I said in another video, I went to the Watchtower Library. And here's some of the things that I found. I was really shocked about this. The question from readings, or question from readers rather, April 1st, 1979, Watchtower, here's what it says. It asks the question, is Jesus the mediator only for anointed Christians? That's the question. And here's what it says. I'll put it on the screen for you. It says, so in this strict biblical sense, Jesus is the mediator only for anointed Christians. The great crowd of other sheep that is forming today is not in that new covenant. However, by their associating with the little flock of those yet in that covenant, they come under the benefits that flow from that new covenant. This is the gist of the article. They make it clear in this article that Jesus is the mediator only for the 144,000. Now, the other thing that I want you to notice is that it says that you and I, not being of the anointed or the 144,000 by the uh, Jehovah's Witness standard, by the Watchtower standard, are not in the new covenant. Well, that should raise a question for you right away, which we're going to cover here in just a moment. Next, I found an article, um, actually it was in a book, Worldwide Security Under the Prince of Peace, page 10, paragraph 16. Here's what it says. Jesus Christ is not the mediator between Jehovah God and all mankind. He is the mediator between his heavenly Father, Jehovah God, and the nation of spiritual Israel, which is limited to only 144,000 members. Now, that's what the Watchtower says, that he is the mediator for only the 144,000. This is what the organization teaches. Now, I can understand them saying, not between God and all mankind from their point of view. I don't understand that from a biblical perspective, but from the Watchtower point of view, being that only Jehovah's Witnesses will be saved, it kind of makes sense that they would think this way, but then they narrow it down, not just to the Jehovah's Witnesses, but to the 144,000 only. So again, according to the Watchtower, this may shock some of you, if you're not one of the 144,000, Jesus is not your mediator. But what does the Bible say about this? I'm going to show you a text and I invite you to look this up for yourself. This comes from the New World Translation 2013 edition. And here's what it says in 1 Timothy 2, 3 through 6. This is fine and acceptable in the sight of our Savior God, whose will is that all sorts of people should be saved and come to an accurate knowledge of truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, a man, 
Christ Jesus, who gave himself a corresponding ransom for all. So this text is very clear that Jesus is between God and men. It doesn't say between God and the great crowd, between God and Jehovah's Witnesses, between God and the 144,000. No, it says between God and man, or between God and men, I should say. So it sounds to me like Jesus is mediator for anyone who wants to approach Jehovah God in any way in prayer. Jesus is the mediator. So the Watchtower Insight book, volume two, page 360, it defines mediator this way. Listen carefully. One who interposes between two parties at variance to reconcile them, an intercessor, an intermediary agent, or go-between. Hebrews 7.25, let's look at another Bible text. It says, so he, that's Jesus, is also able to save completely those who are approaching God through him, that's through Christ, because he is always alive to plead for them. So Jesus is our intercessor. He's our mediator. He's the one in between us and our Heavenly Father, Jehovah. So does this mean if he is in fact what the Watchtower says, only the mediator for the 144,000? Does that mean that only they can approach him in prayer? It would seem that way if in fact he is only their mediator. And according to what the Watchtower that we read earlier said, we kind of get it by proxy through tr trickle down. He's not really our mediator. He's only mediator for that group. And because we're associated with them, we get it. Is that really how it works? Is that what you hear the Bible saying when you read these texts from the Bible? I really, I personally, friends, find this very offensive. It's offensive to me that I have to be attached to this group in order for Jehovah to hear my prayers. And really, it, it kind of flies in the face of this very brother that approached me and said to me, brother, he's not our mediator. He's only the mediator for the 144,000. I love this brother. And he has a beautiful testimony where he was actually on drugs at one time before he became a Jehovah's Witness. He had a, a really bad life. And I do appreciate that the organization helps bring people out of this way of living. But he said he got on his knees, he was about ready to commit suicide, and he got on his knees and he prayed, God, if you exist, please help me. And within minutes, within seconds actually, he told me, someone knocked at the door and guess what? It was a Jehovah's Witness. Now, I do believe that Jehovah can use the witnesses. I believe that he put me in that organization to springboard me to other places. I believe it was a stepping stone, and I believe it can be that way for many people. And for him, it was a life-saving thing. But did God hear that prayer? If I were to ask him, he would say, well, of course he did. But if Jesus isn't his mediator, how did that prayer get to Jehovah? Because that's how we pray. So I just have a few questions for you. I want to keep this as brief as possible. There are some questions that we must ask, and I want you to think about these just from your own understanding and from the consideration that we just talked about what the Watchtower says and what the Bible says, which appear to be contrary to one another. And I believe they are contrary to one another. I believe the Bible over any man's publications. So here are the questions. Take a look. Number one, if Jesus is not my mediator, then who is? Number two, if Jesus is not my mediator, then why do I pray in Jesus' name? Number three, if Jesus is not my mediator, does Jehovah hear my prayers? Number four, if Jesus is not my mediator, then how do I apply 1 Timothy 2.5, which we just read a moment ago? Number five, if Jesus is not my mediator, can his blood cover my sins? Number six, if Jesus is not my mediator, how do I explain the Insight Book's definition of mediator? Number seven, if Jesus is not my mediator, why are we not sacrificing animals? Because remember, we said that you're not in the New Covenant if you're not one of the 144,000, which really raises a lot of questions. If that's the case, if you're not in the New Covenant, that means that you're still under the Old Covenant. And if you're still under the Old Covenant and you're not sacrificing animals, well, where's your salvation come? 
if Jesus is not your mediator. The last one, number eight. Do I believe what the Bible says about Jesus' role as mediator or what the Watchtower teaches? Now, friends, I really want you to think about this. Is Jesus your mediator? And if he's not, why not? Can you show me from the Bible that he's not your mediator? As we've seen, the Bible clearly states that Jesus is the mediator between God and men. That would be mankind, not just men, but it would include women as well. So if we're approaching our Heavenly Father in prayer, if we expect to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father, we must have a mediator according to what the Bible says, but not according to what the Watchtower organization says, because you are not covered by the mediation of Christ. And you, if you're not one of the 144,000, are not under the new covenant. Just food for thought. I hope you continue to study. I hope that these videos aren't coming across too harsh or too dogmatic, but I have to preach the truth of God's word. This is what we're commissioned to do. So friends, keep witnessing. I hope to see you again. May Jehovah bless you in your efforts to study and come to know him and his begotten son, Jesus. Thank you.